show you something here. out here come on second Peter 
Okay, I want you to keep this in mind here. In verse 8, it says, Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Okay, I want you to keep that in mind here. All right, the video says we find ourselves at the close at the close of 6000 years just prior to the rapture of the church, 7 year tribulation and millennial or 1000 year reign of our Jesus on earth. The wording is awfully suspicious. One, there is no 7 year tribulation. Two, there is no millennial or 1,000 year reign of anybody. And then the, this term or phrase or wording, however you want to say it, our Jesus, as if somebody else has another Jesus. So, well, we could get into that, couldn't we? I mean, I'm, I'm being hyper critical, I get it. Let's see, is there, is there a easier way to find this? Uh, oh, I could be, I might have to get back to that. Um, I think it's actually in John. I'm not seeing, oh no, for if he come, for if he that comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if we receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which we have not accepted, you might well bear with them. Uh, for I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chiefest apostles, but though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. All right, and this is one of my favorites right here. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Now I want you to pay attention. Just keep those things in mind. As we move forward, check this out. The 7,000 year plan for mankind prior to eternity. Uh, so that alone is nonsensical. Eternity is forever. It's not set in time. It's everlasting. All right. So I mean, really, uh, this looks okay. It just got an odd circle here. This is meaningless and vain. We are so close to the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. Jesus is coming soon to meet us in the clouds. He's going to hurt Harpatsuas snatches up. Harpatsuas. What what I just show you? Okay. What I just show you. I'm telling you, you can tell they give themselves away. Concision, by the way, is just another word meaning circumcision. In other words, uh, you know, we have many examples of this, uh, but in other words, these people are uh, of the uh, Ju Judaism, is that how you say it? Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. 
talking about those of us that are born of the Spirit of God, those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Keep that in mind. And we'll go sail off to heaven with him, but there's seven years that are coming to this earth, the seven years. Yeah, that's not in the Bible. All right, we're going to look at Daniel 9, but don't worry, it's not there. You're not going to find it. Tribulation that you do not want to be here for. Terrible years. You need to know Jesus. You need to... You need to... Oh, so he's right. You need to know Jesus. He's got that right. Remember what we read in Matthew 24, though. Many will come in my name, saying, Jesus is the Christ, and shall deceive many right now here what's interesting in verse 21 for then shall be great tribulation okay and then immediately after the tribulation we are gathered together all right so when does the gathering together happen immediately after the tribulation which is also known as the great tribulation to understand what he did for you you see we're in the church age but here's what the apostle john was teaching is that there's something eternal that was going to take place it would come with the invitation to come up here. I like that idea to come, to come up, to meet the Lord in the air. You see, not only do we have those passages that are clear passages that expose the coming of Jesus for those that are saved and to meet him in the clouds, to meet him in the air, called the rapture of the church, but we also see this teaching. There was teaching on the expectation of the rapture is taught in a number of ways. Here's one way. In the epistles, Every New Testament writer spoke of the coming of Christ for the church, for the bride. Well, if it wasn't true, if it wasn't a real doctrine, if it wasn't an important doctrine, why would every writer of an epistle write about it? All right, so I just want to real quickly. See, I have to keep this in mind to just keep myself in check if I can find it oh I can't find it never mind no right there it is <laughs> I got my wording wrong <laughs> he said Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am the Christ. And the time draws near. Now think about that. Now even though that's, I believe that's true, um, it's true that they've believed that for a long time also, but you can't go to the other extreme and say, eh, the time doesn't draw near because it does but um, just because these guys are saying the time draws near doesn't make it so and we got to be careful take heed take heed be careful All right. it's the most beautiful event that's happened in the history of mankind that God sent his only begotten son to rescue us from our sin and that's what that blood did. The yeah, blood that Jesus It's beautiful for sure that he laid down his life for us. Remarkable, incredible. Uh, but it means nothing if he doesn't come back. The great day of the Lord is when he comes in the clouds of heaven and we are changed. In a moment, we are changed in the twinkling of an eye. And... Uh, first the dead in Christ shall rise, and then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. This transformation, when our flesh is completely cut off forever, when there's no more sin, 
no more death, no more sorrow, no more pain. When all those things are done away with, that's what it's all about. So yeah, when he laid down his life, that's beautiful, wonderful, incredible. But it means nothing if he doesn't come back. It's a the power of that blood. It's incredible. All you have to do is believe and trust in that blood and know Jesus did that for you. Once you believe in Jesus' finished work, you are saved. That's right. And God will put his Holy Spirit in you. That's right. And it will change you. And we all, we all, that blood to cover our sins. That's right. Because if you say right now, this is just crazy. I don't believe in any of this. It's a fairy tale. I don't need that. I just don't need it. Then you're going to take your last breath, probably during the seven-year tribulation. <laughs> a lot of people. Come on, man. There is no seven-year tribulation. We'll go over that. Don't worry. It's not in Daniel mine. It's not anywhere in the Bible. Not anywhere in the Bible. be hate or love I'm just asking is it hate to tell somebody that if they do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ they will go to hell is it hate or is it love if you love somebody wouldn't you want to tell them the truth I, I don't know as white as snow or we're going to face that judge with sin and be led off to hell which was not created for mankind hell was created for Satan and his angels but if you don't take the payment for sin that's <laughs> okay well, alright whatever free it's grace and utter gift that God has given us if you don't take that gift you'll end up in hell for eternity because of your sins doesn't matter how good you are. You can't, don't fall for the scales thing. Don't fall for that. If I'm more good than bad, God will let me into heaven. It's nothing to do with that. It's everything to do with Jesus paying for your sin. The power of the blood washing you white as snow. If you don't believe in that, then your sins are covered. And you're not being sent to hell for your good. You're being sent to hell for your sin. And it could be, you could be a great person. There's a lot of people that are way better than I ever was. Really, on performance, human performance. There's a lot of people with a lot of integrity, very honest people, nice people, good people. But there's no one good that doesn't ever sin. Not one. That's right. We all sin. You got we it. We all sin. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. And come short. That's right. We all sin and come short of the glory so of God. You need Jesus. You need to trust in his finished work. Today. Today is the day of salvation. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace for by are ye saved through faith. Through faith. It's belief. And not, <clears throat> not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It's not of works. It's 
not what we do. Yep. Well, wait, wait a second. Yeah, I, let me go to that. Romans 6. For the wages of sin is death. Wait, where is that at? sakes where was that at? oh I think it was uh, yeah I'm sorry forgot for for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord left out part of that Pinocchio it's not what we do your works don't earn a smidgen of your salvation nothing your works don't nothing adds to salvation nothing adds to Jesus I gotta go back to this what's going on here where are we at look at that see that it's a period for the wages of sin is death period There's no period there. Where's this coming from? You know, this is the kind of subtlety that drives me nuts. Just drives me nuts. There. What is that verse in 2 Corinthians 11 by it? But I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through a subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Through subtlety as the serpent beguiled Eve. And what do we see here? Where is this coming from, man? I mean, am I overreacting or what? Where is this coming from? We got a comma, we got, a, what do you call that, a colon or semicolon or whatever you call that thing. Let's find the period. Let's find the period. Let's find the, right there. Sins pays off with death, period. Well, you got it. Make sure you change enough words to get that copyright law to abide by the copyright law, right? You got to change enough words so you can make that money. Ha 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 ha. Bingo. There it is, though. Right there it is. Bingo. Exposed. Right there. If you know anything, you know what that means right there buddy boy right there that just right there over through your ship sunk your boat buddy sunk your boat right there sunk your boat exposed you all the way right there that's incredible man how deceitful these liars are it's incredible, man. It's incredible. Alright, just in case. Um, now you know Daniel talks about the four kings, which are the four beasts that shall rise out of the earth until the end of the world. And Daniel lists the first three beasts. The first one, Babylon, the king of Babylon. The second one, uh, the Medes and Persians, the third one, the Greek Empire, and we can deduce that the fourth empire has to be the Roman Empire. There shouldn't really be any dispute about it whatsoever. But that fourth beast is the beast of Revelation and is also referred to as the Antichrist. And this right here is the Antichrist Bible. That's why there's a period right there. It's not what we do. Your works don't earn. In other words, this guy is not a Christian. He's a Catholic. A smidgen of your salvation. Nothing. Your works don't. Nothing adds to salvation. 
All right, and now you got. I mean, you got to be extra, extra careful of these guys. Now, come on, stay with me. And with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me the people this people draws nigh unto me with their mouth and honors me with their lips but their heart is far from me all right so let me tell you does does um is the pope the holy father that's a fair question. Is he the Holy Father? Because the word Pope means Holy Father. Is he the Holy Father? Is he the representative of Jesus Christ? When you look to Jesus Christ, are you looking to the Pope? Or is Jesus Christ in you and you in him? Think about it. Nothing adds to Jesus' finished work. Now, when you're saved, you have fruits of the Spirit. That's beautiful. That's different. But the fruits of the Spirit aren't adding to your salvation. Do you understand that? It's just Jesus. Well, when you say Jesus, are you talking about God above? Or are you talking about that pervert, pedophile in Rome? Wait a second. Am I being too hard on? Am I being too hard on that guy? Let me know if I am. But consider this. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God. Think about this. Um... You got Mr. Pope. What about Mrs. Pope? Think about that. How many children were born in Vatican City last year? Well, I can tell you how many were born last year. It was the same number that was born the year before. It was the same number that was born 500 years ago same number all right the end time signs are wrapping ramping up the number of years prior to the seven year tribulation that's not in the bible anywhere are reaching its conclusion it's time for believers to get busy and spread the good news of god's love all right, hold on a second Celebrate the good news of salvation. Send this video to others. Oh, I'm sharing this video with others. Share the promises given to us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Stay current on the world events by reading raptureready.com by the Reverend Damon Duck. Is that, Don is that Donald's brother? <laughs> Come on. I think I got one more here, don't we? No, that's it. Ah, that's it. Okay, so, you know, in looking, what is this guy about here? What's he? You know, because he's skating a he's skating a fine line right here. For one, there is no millennial reign of Christ. He makes no mention. Uh, he doesn't even talk about it. Does not talk about it. He mentions seven year tribulation doesn't really even talk about that explain it at all and that's not in the Bible either and then he throws up quotes from the DRA the Douay Reims which is an obvious Catholic Bible all right and that's what was that Ephesians 2 let's let's do this here oh, this is incredible Let's do this here. Oh, wait, let's do it this way. Let 
Now you noticed, you noticed something here, right? For by grace you are saved through faith. See, that's what he put up, all right? Of course, the King James is, for by grace ye are saved, okay? No big deal. All right, let's, so I go through, um, you know, this guy's videos, right? And see what this guy's all about. Uh, now that we've exposed him as a Catholic, Let's find out. So, I mean, this is incredible stuff right here. These guys right here. So he's sharing this a month ago. If you think I'm being too hard, let me know. Maybe I'm not being fair. If I'm being hard, okay. But if I'm not being fair, I want to correct myself. But I'm telling you, there's a problem. This, the the imagery here, the video of going through the va this valley. Here, I strongly, strongly contend this valley was cut out by water that um, occurred after the flood. So the waters go up, the whole world is underwater, and then the um, waters, uh, what do you call that, reseed? Is that the right word I'm looking for? It's in here. Let's see if I can find it. I don't even know. But the waters, oh my goodness, I'm way off. Where am I at here? I think it's Genesis 8. I could be way off here. Come on. Where are we at? See, the waters prevailed, prevailed exceedingly. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, prevailed. I'll oh, swage. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged, assu assuaged or whatever that word is. And the waters return from off the earth continually. All right, so in other words, they um, they got less, less water. All right, it started to soak back into the earth. Okay, less intense. All right, the waters assuaged, and um, the waters abated, and the waters were abated. See, that's another great word. Um, Less of a threat, okay. All right, they less waters that soaked back in the earth, though the waters decreased. Yeah, I know that word okay, continually, and the waters decreased continually. And so, by the waters decreasing continually, the waters cut out this right here. All right, this is not billions of years or trillions of years or whatever the some people are teaching but uh, this happened immediately after the flood save us from the seven year tribulation. See, this is why I say these guys are teaching a whole different religion. Save us from the seven year tribulation. That's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible anywhere. Oh, could I do it that without giving away too much here. Let's see. Save us. Lord, save us. Save us, Lord. Let us save us. Save us. 
Save us from what? The seven year tribulation? Now we have to define what the seven year tribulation is. Oh. You know what? I can't find it. I don't know what I'm talking about. And for for he shall save his people from their sins. Okay. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from the seven year tribulation. Oh no, that's not what it says. From their sins. So Jesus saves us from our sins. And the seven year tribulation, man, we're skating on some rocky, crumbly, nonsensical surface here. This is, see, for there shall be great tribulation, for then shall be great tribulation, and then immediately after the tribulation, we are raptured, gathered together. Keep that in mind. Just in case, man, just in case. Nothing. Bible, zero. It's not there. John 16 verse 33 these things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye shall have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world Jesus says himself in the world ye shall have tribulation All right, no servant is greater than his master is that a verse I can find right now or would this take too long the servant is not greater than his Lord neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him so we're not greater than the Lord and if the Lord went through death we're gonna to have to go through death if the Lord went through tribulation, we're going to have to go through tribulation. But be of good cheer. He has overcome the world. Oh, this will be good. If you ever study the book of Revelation, you'll understand there is no way God will take pleasure in in. in Keeping his his church, you see the look. The church, the only special. Wow. I would delete this video if I had it on my channel. You'll understand there is no way God will take pleasure in keeping his church. Are you kidding me? Keeping his his church you see the look the church the only festival on the hebrew calendar that is directly connected to another one is first fruits and feast of pentecost from first fruit from the resurrection you count 50 days and only then you celebrate the feast of pentecost the church could have not been born unless jesus resurrected from the dead they are connected What's the point of Jesus' resurrection saying, I'm the resurrection and the life? And then when he said that, if you remember to, Mary, to Martha, when he said that, he said, he who believes in me, you know, will never die. If he dies, remember, he will, he will uh, live forever. In other words, yeah. Oh, so the Lord comes for his bride. Jesus returns with his bride. All right, where's that at? 
Uh, is that in the Bible? What, Jesus returns with his bride? Where's that at? Where are we at? 25? Okay, let's go study the book of Revelation here. Okay, I, I love that verse. He that has the bride is the bridegroom. Jesus Christ is the bridegroom. The people of God is the bride. Not complicated. The voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee for thy merchants. So this is a clear reference to the last day, the end of the world. The world has come to an end. Jesus talks about this in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, come down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. All right, so, in context, that's talking about right now. Come and take the water. And this, and there came, oh, not to me. Come hither, and I will show the bride. What he's showing is the bride right here is coming down out of heaven this is after the wrath of God this is after death is destroyed forever all right this is after Jesus stomps on the head of the serpent I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between her seed and thy seed between thy seed and her seed am I getting that right I'm going to have to go back here. Genesis 3.15 And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Alright, and so what, when that happens, the new city, the holy city, comes down from God out of heaven and is set back down on a new earth, a new heavens and a new earth. All right, it's not complicated. In other words, he will resurrect. We that are alive. Okay, so I forgot where I was at here. So, church age ends, rapture. That's the end of the world, I guess. Gap. Well, what is this gap? gap is up in Revelation ye have not gone up into the gaps and stand in the gap before I, what are you talking about man gap question mark I don't know how, how do you fit your BS doctrine into come on Seal, trumpet, and bow, and bowl. Is that bow or bowl? Okay. So, when the rapture occurs, we are up in the air with the Lord, and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all, them being the unsaved and all sin and wickedness forever. That's when Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent and death is done away with forever and then all of us return back to a ner uh, uh, new earth with new heavens and so shall we ever be with the Lord and all this stuff here seven year tribulation wrath of God this the the wrath of God occurs when we are up in the air and fire comes down, destroys them, and we are set back down on earth. 
Okay, now, according to these liars, and they are liars, they do lie. I mean, we just read that in Revelation 3. I mean, if it, anybody studied the book of Revelation, <laughs> I mean, he's talking to people as if they don't study the book of Revelation. He might be talking to his people. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. They lie. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. So we are raptured, we are caught up together, we are gathered together. First the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. When this happens, we are up in the air. Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent destroying death forever so this is when this is that moment when we are up in the air behold I will make them to come and worship before thy feet alright so we go to Revelation 20 because this is where somehow people are getting confused about this there's no millennial reign, no 1,000 year reign of nothing, right? And where am I at here? They gathered, the unsaved are gathered at our feet, so the Satan is loosed at the end of the thousand years, which is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are up in the air, the enemy is gathered at our feet, and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. That's parallel with Genesis 3.15. Alright, so at that moment, when we're up in the air, our enemy is gathered at our feet. Alright, when Satan gathers together them that are not saved, they are at our feet, and behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, You've heard, uh, till I make thine enemies thy footstool, and to know that I have loved thee. Talking about those of us that are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Those of us that have faith in God. Now, that's what this is talking about right here. Um, or that's, that's what I'm talking about here. Okay, and that's not, I don't know what's going on here 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 but that's what it's talking about here in Revelation 3 for example they do lie behold I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not and of course uh, you know I don't know why I assume people already know this I should never assume nothing but he is not a Jew which is one in outwardly Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of God. Oops. Right? And this is not a new concept. If they would have understood their Bible, they would have known what this meant. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. Alright, okay. And well, right now, will be caught up in the air to meet Jesus in the cloud, and the dead in Christ will rise up first, and we will join them. In other words, this is what we are going to experience not a seven year horrible tribulation that will take life <clears throat> alright so there is no seven year tri we're going to get into this hold on uh, uh, <laughs> we're going to take we're going to be taken out before there's any trouble at all now come on yep. In fact, look at all these people man higher. it's a very important thing that he just brought up uh, the book of Daniel chapter 9 
makes it very clear that the last seven years that Israel owes to God, if God owes to Israel, is the last seven years, and that is why there's a seven-year tribulation period. Daniel chapter... Okay, well, I won't get into what he just said. It doesn't make any sense. But rather than show you how wrong he is, let's show you what is right. So we got Daniel 9. And we see there will be three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince shall come or shall destroy. Or I'm, I'm sorry, I had that right. People of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate okay now who is the question okay the liars and deceivers will tell you the antichrist all right this is very but i mean this is very simple this is very clear what was his wording? Is the last seven years, and that is why there's a seven year tribulation trail. And the last seven years that Israel owes to God right there. makes it very clear that. Makes it very clear. Very clear. The Messiah. Let me ask you is the Antichrist your Messiah? Really? That's an honest question. It's a fair question. Do you see Messiah as the Antichrist? Because this is very important right here. This will determine everything that you're reading. He, speaking of the Messiah, very clear. All right. The Messiah is the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Christ. I mean, that's. There are so many people that are teaching this is the Antichrist, and it's not. And what we see, what I see a lot here, is people not willing to admit that when they talk about this thing. They won't just come out and say the Antichrist is the Messiah because they have to be very subtle right they got to be very very subtle just like the serpent was in Genesis 3 so also are they subtle very very subtle now I mean that right there this week alright that's where they're getting their seven year tribulation now there are people who will say all right 60 and two weeks and then there are seven weeks I'm sorry am I saying that right Where's this at here? All right, there's 70 weeks. All right, so we got 70 weeks, and then we got 62 weeks, and then we got seven weeks. All right, so that brings us to 69, and then here we got 70. All right, this is when Jesus laid down his life, gave his body as an offering for our sins not ours only but for the sins of the whole world he laid down his life he confirmed the covenant the promise of God by laying down his life for us all 
And when he did that, he caused the sacrifice because he became the sacrifice and oblation to cease. He, his death put all that stuff to an end. And look, it was never the blood of bulls. Yeah, I got to do it this way. I can't remember the exact wording. For the, if the blood of bulls and of goats and of the ashes of the heifer sprinkling unclean sanctified... Okay, well, let's go here. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Only by the blood of Jesus are we perfected in God. It's only by Him only by the blood of Jesus are we sanctified, sealed, secured. Only by the blood of Jesus is our sins covered, done away with, forever. All right. Now, what these guys are teaching is just bizarre. It's not Christian that the last seven years that Israel owes to God well, you see he mentions Israel a couple of times okay so let's highlight these words yeah all Israel have transgressed thy law alright and whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel okay so just so that we understand this is the my people Israel is the people of God all right that's what it, it's referring to and of course the promise of everlasting life was to Abraham and his seed and of course Jacob being a son also known as Israel Uh, therefore being the people of God right so let's go to Galatians here and now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made he saith not into seeds as of many but as of one and to thy seed which is Christ and if you be Christ then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to to the promise. Now we should already know that flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. So just being born of the flesh does not save you. Right? Just simply, nobody's Nobody receives everlasting life just because they, because of their mom and dad, because they were born, uh, you know, where, where am I at here? That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Nobody, we're all born of the flesh, nobody is saved just because they are born of the flesh. No, nobody. Now we we'll go to Genesis 3 for example and this is very interesting and very telling. It's one verse but it tells us the whole story of everything really in a, in a, in a way. Okay, it simplifies everything. So I will put enmity between thee the serpent and the woman. Alright, speaking of Eve and between thy seed and her seed All right. her seed being Eve thy seed being the serpent it shall bruise thy head the serpent's head and thou the serpent shall bruise his heel talking about her seed now woman came from man in other words Eve come from Adam and now from woman comes the Savior all right her seed 
and that there's nobody like him. Nobody in the world has ever born only from a woman. Her seed, and it says here, Thou shalt bruise his heel, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, it tells us the whole story right there. Now, my people, Israel, all right, understanding fully now that this is God's people. This is the seed of Abraham. Not a physical seed, but a spiritual seed. But uh, two things here. Jesus himself says, The nation shall be taken from you. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Uh, and then we can go here and see that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. We are the Israel. Alright, so what he's saying, uh, which one or both of them, are saying that people in 1948 Israel are the people of God and we Christians that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ are not the people of God. In other words, those people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ in their eyes, they are God's people. Now the only way for that to be true is if you view Satan as God. It's the only way. There's nobody that will be saved that does not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody that rejects the Lord Jesus Christ, they will not be saved. God, if God owes to Israel is the last seven years, and that is why there's a seven-year tribulation period. All right, so again, there's no seven-year tribulation. None whatsoever. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. This he is talking about the Messiah. Again, if you view Christians as not God's people, and you view people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ as God's people, you're also going to see this Messiah not being Jesus, but being the Antichrist. Daniel chapter 9 tells you why it's seven years concerning his people and his holy city, Jerusalem. It has nothing to do with the church. Some <laughs> These guys are not Christian. These guys are attacking those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. These guys are the enemies of God. Some of you have come from denominational backgrounds that teach that the church goes through the tribulation period. That is theologically impossible. That is theologically impossible. <clears throat> Let's see what Jesus says. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. Theologically impossible, Jesus. What are you talking about? Can't listen to you. We've got to listen to these guys. Because the seven years is owed to God by Israel. It's the last 70th week of the book of Daniel chapter 9. Wait, what it's is, all wait, Jewish. Uh, it's the last of the 70 weeks. Okay. It all deals with the nation of Israel and the Israel people and the entire world regarding the wrath of God that is being poured out upon the earth. Okay. <clears throat> so, what the story that this guy is telling, the the nonsense that he's saying is that uh, Christians will be raptured up, I guess. And then there will be a seven-year tribulation. And the Jews that reject the Lord Jesus Christ will make it through this time period. That's what he's saying. It has nothing to do with hell. And it has nothing to do with the church. It's a world that has rejected Christ. And it's about God. 
refining and bringing his people, the Jews, through. You, you catch that, his people. People that reject the Lord Jesus Christ. He said it himself, right? A world that has rejected Christ. A world that has rejected Christ. His people. There's only one way to logically look at this, and that's if he's referring to God as Satan. And it's about God. God, in other words, Satan, his God. Refining and bringing his people, the Jews, through the... His people, the Jews, Satan's people, the synagogue of Satan. It's the only way you can make any sense of this. Tribulation period. And it's the seven years that is mentioned crystal clear in Daniel chapter 9. The seven years, crystal clear. Alright, so crystal clear. Oh, except it's not in the Bible. It's not in Daniel 7. Or Daniel 9, whatever. Wherever I'm at. It's not here. Alright. Now, the way they twist this, I mean, seriously, the logic that they use, you could just as well say that this is two and a half million years. I mean, really, the logic that they use, the logic that they use, all right, I think it was way back here. Right there, the logic that they lose, that they use, one day is a thousand years. All right, so seven days would be seven thousand years, but this guy is saying seven years. You catch that? One day, thousand years. Seven days, seven thousand years. Therefore, seven years would be two and a half million years, according to this logic. If one day is a thousand years, then seven years of one day, of that one day measure, seven years of it, comes out to two and a half million, I think. Is it two and a half million? Oh, goodness gracious. What is that? All right, so we got 356 days. Let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. And then add three zeros to that. 2.450000, zero, 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 two and a half million, two and a half million years. So Daniel 9, it, I mean, there's just no, I mean, you're just, there's no logic at all to this stuff. And when you confuse those two things, that's frankly. <laughs> When you confuse these two things, what are you talking about? You're confused. And it's the seven years that is mentioned crystal clear in Daniel chapter 9. Crystal clear, except it's not mentioned at all. Not mentioned. Crystal, see how crystal clear that is? It's not even there, it's that crystal clear. And when you confuse those two things, that's frankly bad teaching. It's it, it's mixing the church in with Israel. It's mixing the church in with Israel. Oh, buddy, you can't do that. So it's mixing the church in with people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ, and that would be a problem, right? You can't have righteous with the unrighteous right for all eternity it doesn't work that way okay which in time past were not a people but now the people of God 
Who's he talking about? Talking about those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the people of God. What he's talking about is crystal clear. He's saying that people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ are God's people. Especially now as we observe the tribulation events rapidly forming. So... Uh, so he goes on to say the tribulation happens after we are raptured and then says we observe the tribulation events rapidly forming uh, soon very soon we are going to meet the king who's the king satan <laughs> i mean this stuff is mind-bogglingly ignorant and wicked absolutely wicked hey this somebody's right there somebody gets it how on earth can anyone read Matthew 24 and still believe in a pre-trib rapture it's well how do you read Daniel 9 and see a seven-year tribulation I mean there's a lot of questions we could ask where's the seven year tribulation at alright this here was fulfilled upon the death of our Lord Jesus Christ it already happened this already happened fellas it's fulfilled done away with there's no seven year tribulation or yeah no seven year tribulation there's, this is long long fulfilled long time ago <laughs> now if this was a big deal wouldn't it be in the new testament this idea oh maybe it's in the new testament uh, except no it's not talking about something totally unrelated it's not there in the Bible fellas these guys are liars deceivers and false prophets false teachers beware of them beware of the concision beware of wolves in sheep's clothing beware take heed what's Jesus say when asked about the end of the world he says, take heed that no man deceive you. Many will come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am the Christ, and shall deceive many. Beware of the scribes. Beware. 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 Beware of men. Beware of false prophets. Beware. Beware of these people. Right? Beware. <laughs>